We're hearing so much on the news about Ukraine and things that are taking place in that nation and some particular cities in that nation that are so destructive. But we're not just talking the destruction of history or buildings, people, innocent people who have not sought out war. Children, mothers, fathers are being separated. Some are being killed. It's, a, it's astonishing to watch this on television. I found myself almost constantly in prayer. I don't want to sound like I just go around praying all the time, but it's in my heart. And last night before Tony and I went to sleep, we prayed for Ukraine. And I would urge you to do the same. This isn't a time for us to make judgments about Russia or Ukraine or other nations or the UN <laughs> or anything that's surrounding this particular situation. It's a time to pray for God's intervention. You know, one of the words God gave me the first of the year was the word exposure. And I believe some things are being exposed that are not very pretty to look at. And we may see exposure in nations around uh, Ukraine. I don't know what to expect, but I do know that God is at work exposing places of darkness that will hinder his light going forth. The victorious thing is that his light goes forward no matter what. In darkness, in destruction, in evil man's mind and things they conjure up, the light of heaven still goes forward. So keep Ukraine in your prayers. Lord, we pray for that light. We pray for hope. We pray for joy. We pray for a sense of excitement that doesn't make sense. They've just left home and hearth and homeland. But you can turn this for good. And you can draw for yourself a people out of Ukraine, even out of Russia. There's people in Russia that don't like what's going on. God, we put this in your hands. And we ask you to intervene for your name's sake and let it be seen and known that the Holy Spirit has invaded and he's brought light and wonderful things are happening that are beginning to turn the darkness into light. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.